there is nothing wrong with your internet, do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your settings. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Welcome to the Mudhorn Clan cast on the Fangirl Zone. I'm Steve. I'm Beskar Dave. And I'm Sean Fangirl And today we're talking about Chapter 11 of The Mandalorian, entitled The Heiress, Episode 3 of Season 2, written by Jon Favreau and directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. Wow! Whom we love. Yeah, and we don't have specific show news this week, but what a cast in this episode. Yeah. I wonder if people are actually begging to get on the show. Please cast me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And there was actually one guest that we see in the opening that we don't even know it's who, who it is. <laughs> oh. Because um, I thought they were going to get to that, but no. <laughs> yeah. Now we had Mercedes Vernado, aka WWE Sasha Banks as Casca Reeves, Simon Cassinides as X Wolves, Katie Sackoff as is Bo Katan, Titus Welver as the Imperial Captain. Man, they got a thing about Deadwood actors. <laughs> <laughs> and Gia Car- <laughs> Carlo Esposito returns as Hologram as a Moth Gideon. And we should be seeing Rosario Dawson as a Hoskitano very soon. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed this or if it was just me. Did Katie Sackoff seem to be just a little off when looking at her character? Character. I didn't think so. I didn't. You know, I sure I, I did. Didn't, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Every I time don't know. she had that helmet off, if she turned just to, uh, to look away, it was like, that doesn't look right. <laughs> Why would they do that? I don't know. Do you know. mean like just her look in general? Or yes. did you mean like her attitude kind of? Yeah. In the no, look? no. Yeah. No, because I, I. Her voice was fine. And, but oh, it just, okay. The, the visual of her was what seemed to be just didn't quite look right to me. And I don't. Oh. I don't know why i don't know maybe it was the costuming but oh I, yeah, I, didn't catch that. That. I thought you meant because like like when she'd look at at our bando and say something and then kind of look at her group like you can see like a shift almost in her attitude like every time you know like you're talking to a little kid to calm him down and then you look at the people like mm-hmm yeah <laughs> you know like back <laughs> Yeah, I just, there was just a couple things that just didn't quite look right to me because I'm a huge Katie Sackhoff fan. And so I just wanted to, wondering if anybody else saw that and everything that I read on this episode, nobody mentioned it. So it must be me. <laughs> I prefer original fight, version yeah. Katie Sackhoff. Oh, absolutely. I do too. <laughs> I prefer bitch pudding, but you know, it's okay. Cause, <laughs> oh my goodness. I thought this was great though. I'm like, yay, we're going forward and we're getting stuff and i feel a little bit like validated with some of what i'd said previously so and we have decided to watch rebels since so much of that is playing into this yeah Yeah, i know it's going to be a journey but it might be worth it you can tell the rest of us (laughs) (laughs) we decided to skip the lego ones but we're gonna watch rebels and clone wars so we're just gonna start soon I may not be done till well after this is over, but we'll see. Right. Should be fun. All right, Dave, why don't we jump in head first, shall we? A Mandalorian braves high seas and meets unexpected allies. You know what? When we saw that in the preseason teaser of that ship at sea, yeah. I don't know, that looks so good. Yeah. And I was really intrigued, too. It was like, wow, where are they going? Huh. They never really did say <laughs> where they were going, huh? Not too far. <laughs> not too far. I know. <laughs> I really thought, I'm like, okay we're getting into a whole new thing and he's going to come back because he has the lizard lady like watching the child i'm like it's going to be a frog lady oh, yeah. sorry frog lady. it's going to be like hella mess when he gets back because he's going to be gone a while and then i'm like oh this is a whole different thing that just happened okay yeah i wonder how much of that seaport that they ended up as was real seaport sure did look real and how much of it was green screen mm-hmm. i mean where I are they the I, I, huh like, 
like a real like boat. Like they were. I mean, I know things would look different, but like I wondered if they'd used like a real boat and took footage, like how it's like hitting the water and it's all splashing up. And yeah, yeah, that'd be a good point. Hmm. Yeah, with they okay. So initial reaction, I liked it. I thought it was it was fun. We're getting more information going forward with stuff. We're getting more characters, and I'm hoping this is not the last we see of certain characters. <laughs> I yeah. mean, come on, he just found three more Mandalorians. This isn't the end, right? It can't be. But I kind of feel like, I don't know, Bo-Katan and her crew are setting us up for, like, heartbreak, I guess, with the, that that family of Mandalorians. So that's what I have to say right now. Steve, what do you think? <laughs> well, that's an interesting thought. I hadn't thought about that. I know that they kind of shook Mando's world with their l- lessons that they had to... Uh inform him of that's for sure and overall i liked the episode i thought it was fun there was some good comedy in it as well and i guess you really couldn't call this episode a space western but they did walk into a bar i mean maybe so i mean we had a boat and then we had a a a train robbery as (laughs) you could uh, yeah yeah and a bar call it definitely bars so yeah i guess you could still consider it a space western (laughs) yeah well, I had my initial reaction was this was good news, bad news, good news, things pop. And I, I love those uniforms that the other Mandalorians were wearing. They were, they were totally badass. Bad news, 35 minutes. I'm like, seriously, we're back yes. to this again? How dare you? I, I hate when they keep going shorter and shorter. I'm like, as long as we don't have like an 18 minute episode like <laughs> last year, yeah. because I swear I was like flipping tables. I was so mad. I was like, 18, what? You know, it's like, I need more. So, fingers crossed we're getting more of that. Yes. Yeah, this one very well could have easily been a 55-minute one and had just, you could have filled the other 20 minutes with Bo-Katan talking to Mando, at least, if nothing yeah. else. <laughs> right, like filling in a lot of information. Yes. She knows she knows a lot more than he does. Oh, you better believe it. <laughs> His ignorance was showing in this episode. Yes, it was. Well, shall we get into our top three moments? Sure. All right, Sean, you're number three. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> the soup or the chowder <laughs> yeah. that the baby, <laughs> our baby Yoda had. And I say this because when it started moving, I'm like, wait, is that moving or is it like just a bubble? And then it comes out. <laughs> I, it had me crack it up. Like, I literally had to pause. I had to pause the show because I'm like, it was so stupid. I'm yeah. cracking up and you just have Mando, don't play with your food. Like, that was awesome. So, yes, that's my number three. <laughs> Did you see the lump come out when they served the chowder? Oh, it was, oh, no. Yeah. I it's like squirting it. along all of a sudden. Poop. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I was watching for it. I didn't see it. I guess I wasn't watching close enough or wasn't expecting it because we see... The guy actually served somebody else the chowder, and it just comes out of that little tube. Yeah. But it was a plastic-looking tube, so yeah, I guess something bigger could have uh, come right out of that thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a lump. Yeah, I didn't catch it. Or if I did, like, just thinking, like, chowder has potatoes, you know, maybe it's something like not actually grasping what the deal was. Yeah. Does it seem like you that they're getting better with uh, Baby Yoda? Yeah, with, this episode like, kind of turned it around <laughs> a little bit. I mean, you know, in, in his in his uh, depiction as a puppet or whatever, it seems to have, I don't know, he's a little more real. Yeah, he's developing a little bit more personality. Yeah, and it's expressive, too, instead of all the little squealing and stuff yeah. that he does. Hey. <laughs> My number three was the landing sequence, and I tweeted that out to us. Steve might have spotted yes. that. Yeah. <laughs> Mando uh, is so badass. And even though this season he's a little less badass and that's disconcerting, but he comes in for this crazy, hellacious landing sequence and they're burning in the atmosphere. And unlike Discovery, <laughs> where the ship is, doesn't get hailed by the new Starfleet generation, they're frantically trying to contact the Razor Crest, like, yeah, you need to slow down, yeah, slow, slow down. down slow I said, down. slow down. <laughs> and as usual, since he is a badass, he, he means he goes, he lands, he goes, there we go, curse flag right off the corner. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. Yeah, it really was. And 
Mine's very similar to Dave's. My number three is the Razor Crest. Crest deserves so much better. <laughs> oh my gosh! You know, I was seriously expecting cardboard. Just <laughs> yeah, as badly damaged as it is, as it crashes into the landing pad, falls into the bay. Now it was yeah. cool to see a repurposed ATAT fish it out. I was going to ask that because Jason and I were watching, and I'm like, "Was that an Imperial Walker?" Yep. And he's like, "I don't know." Oh, we had to, like pause and look at these like it might be like they repurposed it yep. maybe yep and mando gives a mon calamari 1000 credits to repair it and of course when he comes back it actually looks looks worse than it did before <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, this is the best you can do <laughs> exactly <laughs> the outside looks like it's been pieced together with a lot of parts that don't actually fit and the inside looks like it's being held together with uh Fish not netting. quite bungee huh. cords but something <laughs> <laughs> i don't like did they redecorate yeah. what's going yeah. on yeah it's like, did a spider move in? And Well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sean, you're number two. Oh, my gosh. I have to say the Serenity Firefly feel to a lot yes. of the stuff going on with the, sh- with the ship. And even, like I said, my husband had noticed that. He's like, this reminds me of Firefly. Like, the way they're coming in, I'm like, it kind of looks like Serenity. Yes. And then, yeah, when it falls and then falls over, which I'm like, that's just disrespectful. But, um... <laughs> falls right through the water and and when they take off something like flies off and i half expected mando to be like what was that yeah like so i have to say that whole feel which i don't know if that was done on purpose but i love the fact that it happened and i have to say the guy on the ground at our fishing area who's like huh that's <laughs> when it falls over like totally expected it yeah he just walks guy, away <laughs> like yeah you know, we see this all Cal- the time yeah the mon calamarian that was on the deck there um, was puppeted by uh, Javina from uh, Sleepy Hollow. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I like I his attitude. A post that she had made on Instagram saying that this is her episode. And I kept looking and looking and looking. I didn't see her. I was like, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> and just before we got on, I saw the post where she says, yeah, I was puppeteering the guy on the... <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, sweet. Yeah, I just, I just love that. Huh, okay, and this was like, this is everyday occurrence. Okay, let me just wander off. Which again, <laughs> gave me a firefly feel because like nobody was ever surprised when something happened to Serenity. <laughs> No. So, who wants to go next, Dave, Steve? Yes, yeah, Steve. All right. My number two is, are they even? We go through the episode and Bo-Katan saves Mando time and time again. <laughs> First on the Corrin pirate ship where he gets locked in their uh, underwater brig after him uh, tossing baby Yoda into the mouth of a... <laughs> Whatever it was. Yeah, see how that feels? Yeah. (laughs) And then again, after he leaves all upset because they aren't Mandalorian like he is, and the relatives of the Quarren that were on the ship that the Night Owls blew up think he's responsible, so they were going to take out Baby Yoda, Mm. and they show up again to take out that whole crowd. And really about the only thing that Mando did to try to make up for it, I guess, is when they're making their way to the bridge on the Imperial ship, that last group seemed to have uh, upgraded their weapons. He goes running up there, just taking hit after hit, throws some grenades at him to take him out. Yeah, at least that was his badass yes. moment. <laughs> Pretty much sacrificing himself, but he's had the right armor for it. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was interesting. I, I almost felt like that was a little bit of a dig, like, <laughs> let's check out my armor. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I always thought it was insulting because he's usually so clever and such a great fighter. But here he is, just like a blunt instrument. Fine, I'll the one. I'll just charge into it and take all the fire. Right. But you know, he used the assets what he had at hand. Of course. Just that itself was, he tells Bo, this is not part of the agreement. <laughs> yeah, tough. So, he doesn't realize how much she outranks him. <laughs> oh, yeah, no doubt about it. So, yeah, I'm thinking uh, he probably uh, still owes her at least one. So we'll see hmm. if uh, that comes to fruition any time in the future. Because she is, I think she was impressed that, sure. uh, with his skill and his bravery. Because she actually tells him. 
I'm honored with your bravery. And yeah. This is the way. And oh, we'll yeah, see. <laughs> she went, it seemed like she went from mocking this is the way to a so real sincere this is the way. Right, exactly. Okay, Dave, you're number two. My number two, speaking of Bo-Katan, is the Bo-Katan reveal. And it's Katie Sackoff. Yes. <laughs> And I love Katie Sackhoff. And that's it. So tough. <laughs> <laughs> I was just happy to see her. Oh, absolutely. And I'm glad we finally got some movement in that direction. You know, she was going to be on and said, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, you, good. you really think that her character is going to be a, a major, major player in the seasons to come if they don't actually even spin it her story off into a series on its own boy i don't know i i started to suspect a spin-off series right after that pursuit of the dark saber right <clears throat> she's gonna need him i mean mop gideon's hunting down baby yoda yes din, din Djarin, right and so i mean he's gonna have it with him so she's gonna use the mandalorian as bait <laughs> That's very possible. <laughs> I, ju- I had just enough tinfoil left for that one, Steve. Okay. <laughs> Good. Let's now, get to number could, one. Yeah, I could see her getting that ship to uh, Mandalore, dropping off the weapons, and actually beating Mando to uh, <laughs> the planet that he needs to go to. Yeah. And they'll, yeah. Start, he, they'll use her ship instead of his. <laughs> we'll leave the... <laughs> he'll put it together. You knew he yeah. was waiting for me. Yes, Ooh, I knew. That could get bad. I know. Oh, there's another rabbit. Rabbit hole will go down. I'm well, sure. At some it time. gets so bad that he decides to go off on his own, become the first, well, not the first, but the next uh, Jedi uh, Mandalorian. Yeah. Ba boom. <laughs> we'll see if that theory plays out this this season. Right. Okay. All right, Sean, you're number one. My number one has to be with the reveal of the Mandalorians, the other ones, and them telling Mando that you're a child of the Watch, a religious zealot, just a sect that would rescue, and I'm saying that in quotes, foundlings and turn them into these zealots without them knowing. And we were all members of the of the Watch until they turned full evil it's like wait what yeah <laughs> they went full evil because like i said the look that katie kept giving the night owls i'm like is she evil <laughs> <laughs> See, I haven't watched all the Rebels or oh. any of them yet. So that's why I'm like, Ugh! but I did go down a rabbit hole to find some information. And it's very interesting is all I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my uh, number one is also in that vein. Are Mando's eyes opening with all that information dump he got about being uh, raised by religious extremists? Will he begin to consider following uh, Mandalorians from Mandalore instead of the Watch? Ah, that's going to be an awful conflict for him. Oh, it will. Yeah. But there's his way to remove the helmet if he needs to. <laughs> so I can go back and see his girlfriend. Yeah, it <laughs> will eventually happen. <laughs> that That's an interesting thought. Like, I didn't even think like, oh, hey, if I'm not following this way, then maybe I can do this. And how would those other ones feel who all remove their armor and they're like, peace, I'm out. <laughs> they won't like it. The ones that he grew up with. So right. Well, they all decided to leave and they're done. They're not even Mandalorian anymore. Yeah, but he was part of them. He, well, I know. That's he why he I'm feels like, hmm. a certain kinship to them. And I hope we see the armorer again. Right. He doesn't want to betray I don't her think trust. she's dead. No, I don't think so either. I think she like, kicked some ass, but that's a whole nother story. Sorry, mm. Dave. What's your number one? My number one is uh, Take My Hand when he <laughs> he goes down in the hatch with that uh, beast that swallowed Baby Yoda and bo we don't know it's her yet, but we most people did. She sticks her hand there and says, take my hand. But I'm like, that felt so good. Yeah. Finally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To have someone come to his rescue. The people he's looking for, and not only is she a major character, but he, he gets the help. I mean, the guy's getting his ass kicked. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. finally, someone yeah. reaches out and helps him. And it's one of his people. So that was really gratifying. I did like that moment, especially because there was no hesitation from him. Where I think if it was anyone other than a Mandalorian, he would have probably been like i got this never mind or, or pulled them down into the water right. <laughs> thanks so yeah i enjoyed that you got honorable mentions oh uh, i got two okay so first <clears throat> one is the fact that we see that the black saber is a little bit more than just a saber because katie sack off character bo katan was pissed when she got that imperial i was gonna say manager but <laughs> manager <laughs> 
Bosh. (laughs) (laughs) I blanked on the word. But like when, you know, she's like, where is it? Does he have it? I'll let you live. And I'm like, oh, this is a lot more than we thought it was. And that's when I went down a rabbit hole trying to find the information. And it was really interesting. And I wonder if we're going to touch on that at all this season, because there's Darth Maul and the whole uprising and then takedown on Mandalore. It's like, what the heck? Yeah, like, Dane. maybe we do need a Boba Fett movie show, whatever, so we can find out what happened on Mandalore. Yeah. Now, we are supposed to get an Obi-Wan Kenobi spinoff, I believe. And oh yeah, it his yeah. backstory. So I think they'll be able to fill in a lot of the the Mandalorian backstory in his story as well. I he hope was so. very involved with them. I hope so. And my second honorable mention has to be Baby Yoda with the baby frog because I was worried. <laughs> like, Just I don't know for that to go in his mouth any second. <laughs> oh my god! Like as it it bursts and he's like staring at the eggs. I'm like, oh my gosh, no, don't do it. And he's like, oh. And then when he's like playing with the baby frog, I'm like, don't do it. Yeah. I was like I holding know. my breath. Going, no, please don't do it. Please don't. There's already a petition. Yeah. Like, first of all, I can't believe it's a petition. Yeah. It gets worse, though, when you like delve into that online and people are like, you know, Yoda didn't go into hiding. Yoda went to a buffet. <laughs> when you go <laughs> Yoda on Dagobah. So it's like, oh, my God. Yoda was like the apex predator on Dagobah and everything was probably afraid of him. <laughs> but yeah, it, like I said, rabbit hole. But those are my honorable mentions. So, uh, Steve, you, what are what are yours for the week? Yeah, mine are, uh, I've got two as well. The predator becomes the prey. Uh, the child came under attack by a handful of squid-like creatures from his chowder bowl to the stomach of a mamacore, huh. which really kind of looks similar to the sarlock just in the water. I wonder if they're long-lost cousins. And, Giant water tentacle. Yeah. Now, of course, we lose the the, tra- the little transport carrier for him, so that might be a problem in the future. Cause I see that. I was like, this little like pram is all messed stuff yeah they had to rip one side of it off and we never saw it again once they got him out of there so. <laughs> I was gonna say, hey lady i need that stuff yeah. more pieces around <laughs> that's a trans that leaves my hands free to uh yeah end off attack he's, he's got to get a baby bjorn now <laughs> yeah. yeah i can see him with one of those <laughs> straps to the front where he- <laughs> oh i i hope they get a what do they call that four-legged thing you know that we saw a style Salvaged a razor crest and oh, um, what do you call those? It's not an ad at, is it ad at? No, ad at's the two one, the imperial okay. walker. Yeah, I hope they get a tiny one. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Just like the toys they sell for the kids, you can go oh around in your God. own. That's great. <laughs> Imperial Walker. You'll keep looking at them because it's so clunky. <laughs> Yeah, And my second one is Happily Ever Froggy. Frog Lady reunites with her husband and he gives Mando the information about where to find the other Mandalorians, which of course ends up being a trap, but he didn't know mm-hmm. that. And they actually agree to watch the child for Mando. And you immediately worry about the rest of their eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to take out his chopsticks and start clicking them together in hunger. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But when Mando comes to get him, he doesn't want to leave. Now, <laughs> was it because he wanted to take the baby frog with him or he wasn't done playing with it? He was <laughs> building uh, his uh, hunger up? I don't know. <laughs> I do love the comment. I have enough pets. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very subtle humor. Very good. My, All right, Dave. <laughs> All right. My honorable mention. So I have a special effects honorable mention. When that freighter, the uh, Imperial freighter was leaving the harbor and across the water especially the aft view where you can see the thrusters right that looks so real that looks so real unbelievable i mean we've seen plenty of film of like 747s take off and to see this go and when it came back later <laughs> under new management yeah it you know it skims across the water and the water like yeah you spins see it up in the air yeah. yeah so cool that is so cool <laughs> 
If you guys have not watched, something pops up called Disney Galleries, and it's about the Mandalorian and showing a lot of like behind the scenes and talking to all the directors and all. It is so cool how they, we've only watched two of them, but how they were shooting some of the stuff like uh, Mando in the cockpit. And they have like this huge screen that goes like all the way around him Mm. to do the, uh, like the background, like the space. And you'll see like the lasers, you know, shooting past it so that they get like the lights on his helmet and all it was really neat and like i said i only got two episodes in but i was like this is a lot more than i thought like that like how they were doing it. it's not just cgi it's not just this it's not just that so it's like okay they're kind of mixing things and it's just really kind of cool watching all of it very cool yep i have another one uh for honorable mention it's when uh that that other imperial officer is making the last stand in the back of the ship the cargo hold (laughs) and he tells the captain captain bosch that he has him trapped. And he goes, I got him trapped in the cargo control room. And look on the captain's like, where? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I love that. Oof. It's like the guy doesn't even realize what he said. Yeah. <laughs> <Captain> <laughs> busy busy himself Close in the, the door. back. Close the door. I'm like, funny. oh. That was funny too. Yes, it was. <laughs> oh my gosh. So let's jump to ratings. So I am going to give this five baby frogs because I really liked how it was going and that at least the baby frogs survived as far as we know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm giving it a 4.75 out of five. Which way is the way? I'm giving it, I'm tougher marker than you guys, because like I said, good news, bad news. Things pop, but 35 minutes, come on. Speaking of 35, (laughs) I'm giving it 3.5 Starbucks. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. This was good, though. I I liked it, and I'm just going to stand by my baby frog. I believe. (laughs) Well, we do have some feedback from our friend Fred from the Netherlands. So let's hear what he thought about this episode. Hello Steve, Dave and Sean and all listeners to the Fangirl Zone. This is Fred from the Netherlands with some feedback for The Mandalorian Season 2 Episode 3. Last week I said this Mandalorian has no lucky streak. Well, it proves again. Finally landing at this space harbor and then falling with his razor crest into the water. It resulted in a nice picture though how this big big crane lifted the razor crest from the water. Then he gets trapped with a mama core and almost drowns. Then he finally meets some Mandalorians, but they are no real Mandalorians according to his belief, not true to the way of the Mandalore. His razor crest gets worse and worse, and I really love that ship. I even consider asking a Lego razor crest for Christmas more than 1000 pieces that will keep me busy for a while should be a good distraction from all this work because in covid time doing a lot of work from home the borders between work and private life really vanish greetings all the best fred from the netherlands and i want to finish up with the funniest and best scene of the episode i think we have them trapped sir trapped them where in the cargo control area. Where? In the cargo control area. Ah! Yeah, Fred. Fred, that was uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> we are of like mind, Fred. Absolutely. I did like all the little bits. So, yeah, semi-lucky and... I don't know. I I mean, these other Mandalorians, even though he doesn't think they're real Mandalorians, I think had a better sense of humor, especially when he had Bogotan, like, put some tea on. We'll be up there shortly. Yeah, like, yeah. wait, they have tea? <laughs> red tea. Yeah. Oh, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> the red leaves. Yeah, that was uh, pretty amazing. And we sure appreciate your feedback, Fred. Thanks, Fred. Looking forward to hearing from you again. Yep, we appreciate your review. And speaking of which, please review and rate us on iTunes and any other platform you use for your podcast with good ratings and reviews. It helps us other fans of the show to find us, as there are plenty of other Mandalorian podcasts out there. But only one Mud Clan. (laughs) 
<laughs> Mudhorn Clan, tell your friends, and I hope you are enjoying our podcast. And don't forget to check out the other great Band Girl Zone podcasts. And we would love to hear from you. So you can shoot us an email. We have a dedicated email now to mudhornmail at fangirlzone.com. But you can always find all of our under other contact links at www.fangirlzone.com. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, even Tumblr on occasion. But there's so many, it's so much easier just to go over to the website and check it out. And that way you also have Steve and Dave and my own Twitter too, if you want to shoot something to us. Sometimes we're tweeting these shows, sometimes we're not. But, you know, it never hurts to tweet along and we'll happily answer you. So for this episode of the Mudhorn Clan Cast. This is Steve. Your bravery will not be forgotten. This is the way. I'm Sean Fangirless. I'm changing the deal. <laughs> Good one. And this is Beskar Dave. Dang, Farrick, I forgot to write a sign off. <laughs>